All right, so today we are gonna make pasta from scratch, and this isn't just any pasta. You like that full, that's a full kitchen facial right there. Um, we are making spetzel. Do you know what spetzel is, Howard? Uh, a ger something German, Austrian? Yeah, yeah, that's good enough. I said it very Italian, I said spetzel. But it is Austrian, kind of German, and this is a pasta you can bust out any day of the week, and it's so delicious, really impressive, very bouncy too. So this is gonna be my spinach spetzel with bacon. Ready? I'm ready. All right, 15 minutes. I feel like we can knock this one out before, but this is gonna be kind of mind blowing to a lot of people. So obviously I just put in some nice hot water. We're bringing this to the boil. This is gonna boil our pasta. While we're waiting for that, we're going to render out a little bit of bacon. And I'm not gonna lie, I might have asked for bacon, and I'm not gonna blame who got me turkey bacon, but I am literally making this with turkey bacon. So you can make it with bacon, turkey bacon, whatever you got. Um, but, you know, up to you. And if you're not doing meat at all, do smoked paprika. It's a really good replacement. So what I'm gonna do with this bacon, Howard, get in nice and close. I'm just gonna just cut it down the middle, like this, and then into little cubes. And we're making carbonara. Carbonara is Italian. And this is like, if you're like, I don't know, a little bit like one of those people who don't have a lot at home to cook with and always on a budget, like this is like a college person's like home run dish. Because you're talking bacon, you're talking eggs, and you're talking cheese. That is literally all you need to make this sauce. And it is so damn good. So damn good, you will lose your mind. So. I'm gonna add all this bacon to some olive oil. One trick I like to do to get the bacon really crispy is just get my hand. Did you like that little, did you see my little pirouette yeah, right there? Yeah, yeah, you wanna do it? Okay, let's do it. You like that? When I tiptoe, the whole place shakes. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of water and just spritz it. And what that does is it actually makes it so the bacon doesn't immediately crisp. It kind of boils the bacon and helps some of the fat render out and it makes it a little crispy. So a little splash of water will do you good. All right, so we're getting that nice and crispy. The water is boiling, and now we're gonna make the spetzel itself. And this is green spetzel, and the reason why it's green, simply put, is I had a shit ton of leftover spinach. Like, an insane amount. I have like four boxes. Don't ask me why, but I have a lot of spinach. So I'm gonna add three handfuls to this bowl. Two, three. Now, you don't need the spinach for this. You could just make the dough. But this makes it really cool looking. Oh yeah, our bacon's doing our thing. So, I got our spinach. Come over here, Howard. We hardly ever blend. Have you noticed that? We hardly ever blend. So I'm gonna add spinach to the blender. All the little leaves. Cool. And then I'm gonna grab like a mug and I'm just gonna grab like half a cup of water. You don't even have to measure it, just kinda eye it right over the spinach and blend it up. You're making just like a green paste. Cool. My blender is psychotically powerful. All right, so I've got our green little water situation here, which looks healthy, and it is healthy, but it doesn't mean this dish is healthy because it's not really indulgent, but delicious. And then I'm gonna grab an egg. I'm actually gonna grab a couple eggs. For the dough itself, I'm literally just gonna add one egg. Cool. And then I'm gonna do double the amount of liquid with flour. So I did about maybe a quarter cup, third of a cup of this. So I'm gonna grab, just double that of flour. Now, whenever you measure anything, you never wanna scoop it and then level it out. You wanna scoop it, pour it into something else. The reason why is if I scoop it like this, Howard, if you get in really close, I smush all the flour into the cup and it actually compacts the flour and you get way too much flour. So when you think you're getting a cup, you're actually getting more than a cup. But when you pour it into something, it kind of gets light and fluffy and that's the right way to measure. Do you know that? 
I didn't, actually. Now you do. I watched Sesame Street the other day with Jonah, and uh, I learned a lot. <laughs> you learn a lot in that show. It's unbelievable. All right, bacon is smelling really good. So, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna whisk up this egg. I'm gonna add in our spinach mixture. Not the lid. Beautiful. I'll leave a little bit in case we need it. And then I'm gonna add in our flour. And I'm just gonna whisk. It's like making a pancake batter, a green pancake batter, a Dr. Seuss pancake batter. Pretty easy, right? This is looking good. It should be pretty thick. This is looking right. I might go, oh look at the color, dude. Isn't that awesome? I'm gonna go with a little bit more. You guys know how I measure. I do it by eye. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more, just to make sure it's nice and thick. This should be almost like a mixture between um, like a dough and a batter, like somewhere in between. This looks right. This looks really good. See that? That's looking really nice. It looks like Play-Doh. That looks awesome. All right. Bacon is getting nice and crispy. Look at that, Howard. It smells so good. And it's turkey bacon. Who would have ever thought? I'm not like, I'm not hating on turkey bacon, but let's be honest. It's turkey bacon. All right, so bacon is crispy. I'm gonna take that off. That is chilling. I've got my batter. Again, egg, flour, and our little spinach water mixture. Big pinch of salt. You can add garlic in here if you want. I'm not gonna do it. Why? Because I'm lazy. It's an everyday thing. It's like, you don't need to have garlic and everything. Although I might put a little bit in the sauce. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. All right, so You've a little salt, pepper. You've been using more pepper, pepper lately. You know I like pepper. Yeah, I like pepper. Yeah. Uh, it's not my. Fi it's not. I don't think it has to go in everything, like I've said in the past. But all right, now it's gonna get crazy. Now, Howard, it's gonna get real. What am I doing with a colander? I'm not draining the pasta. I'm making the pasta. So I'm gonna set this colander in the water like this, okay? And then I'm gonna grab a spatula. My spatula matches my pasta, and I'm gonna take a little bit of this batter out into the colander. You getting this, Howard? I got it. Okay. And I'm gonna literally press it through. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. As I press, little globules fall into the water. Oh my God, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? So you press and pasta cooks. You just kind of move the batter around, pressing it through the holes. They actually make spetzel makers, but you guys know I don't have that. So a spetzel maker literally just looks like a mandolin or like a big kind of like flat cheese grater. Think of it like that. And you just kind of move the batter around and it's falling through the holes, making pasta as we talk. Is this just insane? And it's beautiful. Are you, you're loving it. How is love? You're I, smiling. I'm really surprised. Here. I had no idea this was coming actually. Really? Great. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people make spetzel, but it's one of those things that is so worth it and absolutely delicious. This is getting really hot. If this gets really hot on you, be smart. I feel like Smokey the Bear, be smart. Grab a towel. Don't burn your hand. I can't even tell you how many times I've singed my arm. Oh my God, it's numb at this point. All right, so look at that. Isn't that insane? You're just pressing it through and it comes out as these beautiful little pastas. I love it. Can you, and I just want to make sure you can see, catch that, Howard. So as these drop, right, yeah. it goes right into the water. And if you want them thicker and bigger, you can make it a little bit more floury. But I'm liking this size. I think this is perfect. Awesome. So we're going to let those cook for like two minutes. Really, really easy. And while that's cooking, I'm going to make the sauce, which is dead simple. All you got to do is grab a little bowl, crack an egg, and again, this is kind of like why I said for college students, for anyone who like doesn't have a lot of ingredients at home, this is so your next pasta sauce. This thing is so delish. Crack an egg, whip it, pour in your bacon. Cool. And the heat from the actual spetzel, from the pasta, is gonna let's cook the egg. That's what's gonna kind of make everything 
safe and delicious to eat, but it's really gonna make it creamy as well. And then I'm gonna grab some cheese. I've got, of course I've got Parmesan. You know I've got Parmesan. You know my rule about Parmesan, never buy the crap, always buy the real stuff. The chunk of Parmesan, it's expensive, but your cooking will taste 50 times better. All right, that's about a cup, handful of Parmesan. I don't think anyone who's watching this has a problem with how much cheese I use, okay? How much time are we doing, Howard? Uh, about five minutes. Okay. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna take the spetzel out using my spider. Just check this out, just look. Is that just crazy? Wow. These are little noodles, right? And I'm gonna pour it right into the sauce. It's insane. Now the hot spetzel, again, is gonna cook the egg. And you have, my friends, one of the coolest little dishes. Now one of the things you can do is take the spetzel and put it in ice water so it stops cooking. And then when your friends come over, you can take that cold spetzel, put a little oval on the pan, throw the spetzel into the oval, and it gets crispy, like hash browns. But today we're doing this, look at this, Howard. This is just dinner for one, but as I, kind of move it around, it gets creamy, it cooks the egg. The Parmesan is kind of falling in between all the different areas and it smells insane. One thing you could add to this, if you want to go over the top, throw a little nutmeg in this. Ooh, unbelievable. So let's plate this out. All right, I'm gonna grab a plate. Beautiful. A little spoon. And look at this, creamy. If you're like a fettuccine alfredo, risotto, any of those dishes, this is so gonna be your jam. Spetzel is absolutely, I think, underappreciated, underthought of, and you just see me bust this thing out in like 12 minutes. Fresh, homemade spetzel. You know I'm going with a little Parmesan over the top because I'm not crazy. Boom. Look at this, look at that. Get in there, Howard. With how much time left? Three minutes left, baby. In 12 minutes, less than 12 minutes, you've got homemade spinach spetzel, really crispy bacon, beautiful kind of carbonara, creamy sauce. You are going to legitimately die for this dish. This dish is gonna take you to a completely different world. Enjoy that one. And for more recipes, head to readyforseconds.com or of course, Yumly.